Hi, Richard Eidlin here from Business for America. We're happy to have you all join us uh, today for this important webinar and update on the Time to Vote movement. The reason that Business for America is, co is hosting this webinar today with a number of our colleagues across the country is to encourage civic-minded businesses to take steps to encourage their employees and their customers to vote and participate in the 2022 election. And today's conversation, we are featuring three companies that have been quite involved in the Time to Vote initiative for a number of years. And we wanna hear from those companies about steps they've taken to encourage employees, um, some of the ways they've operationalized those practices, opportunities for companies to serve, for employees to serve as volunteers, and also learn whether there's been any um, obstacles or difficulties in implementing this program. As we all know, the more that employees participate in our civic uh, society strengthens our democracy. So our focus very much with this program is to give you the tools and resources that you can use when going back into your company and trying to operationalize time to vote. Um, and um, so Chip, why don't we go to the next slide here? Thank you. So I wanted to thank a number of organizations that helped promote today's webinar, including the American Independent Business Alliance, the American Sustainable Business Network, Bridge Alliance, Good Business Colorado, Leadership Now Project, the Main Street Alliance, Moda Vote, New Hampshire Businesses for Social Responsibility, Public Private Strategies, and Vermont Businesses for Social Responsibility. So thanks to all of you who helped to uh, get the word out and uh, encourage colleagues and businesses you work with to be part of this program. The speakers we have today, and let me just briefly introduce them and then they'll say more about themselves. Um, so we'll hear from JJ Huggins, and JJ works in the public relations, communication, and public policy team at Patagonia. And JJ has been the uh, major Sherpa and, uh, and all, all in guy to make time to vote work. And he's been doing that in concert with colleagues at PayPal and uh, Levi's. Uh, we also have with us today, Lee DeForest from uh, Florida. And Lee is the operations project manager and part of Legacy Vacation Resorts social purpose team. And uh, Legacy Vacation Resorts is a B Corp and operates uh, in four states across the United States. And then finally, we'll hear from Jessica Hyman. Jessica is with Hims and Hers, which is a telehealth uh, service platform active across the country. And Jessica works in Hims and Hers uh, public policy operation, both on state and federal issues. Okay, so with that, let me turn it over to uh, JJ Huggins from Patagonia, who's going to give us some of the, you know, more granular details, the history of Time to Vote, um, and how your companies, regardless of their size or sector can participate. And I, I do really want to mention that, that, you know, the Time to Vote program is not designed for any particular size company. There are companies with four employees that are part of Time to Vote. And there are huge companies with, you know, several uh, hundred thousand employees that are also part of Time to Vote. And that crosses all sectors of, of American, the American economy. So JJ, let me turn it over to you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Richard. And thank you to BFA for organizing this today and for all the help over these last several years with recruiting companies to join Time to Vote. Good to see everybody here today. My name is JJ Huggins. I work on the PR communications and public policy team at Patagonia. We are based out here in Ventura, California. In addition to my day job as a PR guy, I am a bit of a project manager for Time to Vote. I would say I'm on the steering committee for Time to Vote. And like Richard mentioned, Time to Vote is run by 
primarily by three companies, Patagonia, Levi Strauss and Company, and PayPal. We're sort of the three amigos behind this whole project. If there's any money that needs to be spent on it, we do pretty much all of the funding for it, although we, we operate on a shoestring. And we put mainly our staff time into it. That's the biggest expense for us is each company contributes staff members to this project to help keep this thing going. And then we work with folks like BFA to, to spread the word and, and help organize a lot of the, the stuff behind the scenes and in front of the scenes for Time to Vote. I'll give you a quick origin story of Time to Vote and then we can get into some of the more granular details of it. Patagonia, as you may or may not know, is deeply involved in environmental activism. That is baked into the DNA of our company going back to 1973 when we were founded. What we've learned over the years is that if you want to consider yourself an activist of any sort, you have to, at a minimum, vote. Voting is the foundation for any sort of activism. And we been telling our employees and our customers and our communities to to vote for decades now but in 2016 we took it a step further and decided to give all of our employees in the u.s the day off on election day in 2016 we closed all of our retail stores our offices and our warehouse here in the u.s on election day that year and by doing so, we number one, eliminated any sort of time barrier for any employee who might not otherwise be able to vote because they would have to work an eight hour day. We took that barrier away for folks. We gave them paid time off. And we also, by shutting down and shutting down our public facing retail stores, we sent the message to our communities that nothing is more important than voting on election day your clothing, your shopping could, could wait a day. That went over incredibly well, primarily with our employees that year. Our CEO got several thank you letters from employees just saying how much they appreciated the fact that the company was supporting their ability to be involved in the democratic process. In 2018, we decided we wanted to try to scale the Time to Vote program outside of Patagonia. And we teamed up with Levi's and PayPal to do that. And that's when Time to Vote as a movement was born. We launched Time to Vote ahead of the midterms that year in 2018 with the expectation that we might get a couple dozen companies to join us. We strategically decided that we weren't gonna tell companies they had to shut down for the day or do any one specific thing. We just wanted companies to give their folks time to vote, but we weren't gonna tell them exactly how much time that had to be. Patagonia sells clothing. We can close for a day, but we realize companies in other sectors, food service, medical supplies, so on and so forth, cannot close on election day. There's a lot of areas of the economy that need to remain open on election day. But you can give your employees a few hours of time off. You can help your employees vote early or vote by mail. There's a lot of things you can do with your colleagues to make voting more accessible. And so we do, we did back then and we still see it today. We see a need for time to vote to exist. So we launched it in 2018. We got like 400 and some odd companies that year. We kept it going into 2020 and I'll talk more about how many companies are enrolled in a minute. But here are, on this slide, here are the principles of time to vote. Number one, time to vote is nonpartisan. We realize that Patagonia, Levi's, and PayPal have a progressive tilt. There might be an appearance there. So we, when we launched time to vote, we specifically, one of the first companies we asked to join was Walmart. We specifically went to Walmart because we know that for one thing, Walmart operates in every state in the country and their employee base is, they're one of the biggest employers and they're gonna be, they're so diverse, it's gonna hit every political ideology there is in this country. And we have continued to strategically recruit other very large companies that represent all walks of life. There is nothing partisan about voting. Time to vote is only about giving your employees 
the, some time that they need to go cast their ballot. We don't tell folks who to vote for. Time to vote is business led. It's, it's not a nonprofit. It's, it's sort of a coalition, we call it, or movement of companies that have taken this public pledge. By joining Time to Vote, you're taking a public pledge to give your employees time to vote. And it's just companies saying that we realize that companies have a responsibility to let their people vote. The American worker shouldn't have to choose between voting and earning a paycheck. We made sure time to vote is flexible. We realize there is not a one size fits all solution to time off around voting. And perhaps the best part of this, it is free to join. Like I said, we operate time to vote on a, a shoestring budget and it's all funded by Le Levi's, PayPal and Patagonia. Here on this screen, we're looking at the website. Please, if you remember one thing that I say today, it's maketimetovote.org. That is our website. When you click onto that website, you can click the Join the Movement tab, and that'll direct you to a form where you can apply to join Time to Vote. When you do that, you need approval from your company leadership, and then it's you're going to fill it out a form and that's going to come to the time to vote team and there's a handful of us on the steering committee. We review every application and we double check everything to make sure we don't have any rogue employees or fake companies and so forth signing up. So there's a layer of careful vetting that takes us a couple of weeks just to make sure everything checks out. And on this slide here, you can see these logos here from Under Armour. Yeti, a bunch of Sephora, Ralph Lauren, you know, some companies that are very large and well known, and then some smaller companies. Like Richard said in the beginning, Time to Vote is for every size company in every sector of the American economy. If you are a company that employs one person, that's still one vote. We want you in Time to Vote. If you're a massive company, we want you as well. And we, we rotate out these logos every couple of weeks on the website. There's so many companies in Time to Vote now that we can't list all of them and list all the logos in one place without crashing our website. So we switch those out every couple of weeks to give everybody an opportunity to get some visibility on this website. So here is where we are at from 2020 through today. We're up to, as of today, we're up over 1,970 companies. The goal for this year is to get to 2,000 companies, which is by election day, which is incredibly doable, especially with the help of all the folks on this call today. We went from 400, and, I think 480 companies in 2018 to that 1965 companies in 2020. Obviously during the 2020 presidential election, you saw a massive amount of interest and engagement, especially from the private sector. In 2020 alone, we got nearly 3,000 press mentions about Time to Vote, and there were no negative news stories. The media coverage was generally neutral, if not slightly positive, about Patagonia. The, the, the media and the public see the benefit and the need for this program to exist. They like the fact that business leaders are helping the American workers and putting paid time off behind that effort. And again, if you remember one thing that I said today, please, it's maketimetovote.org. Uh, JJ, thanks so much for that description. L let me ask you a follow-up question, which is, you know, you said that Patagonia <clears throat> uh, closed all its stores, you know, which is pretty remarkable. And Obviously, not every company can do that uh, who participates in time to vote. So what is the give us a sense of the range of ways that companies participate? Yeah, that's a great question. For one thing, there are laws, and a lot of folks on this call probably know there are state laws, depending on which state you're located in. Um, some states have laws that mandate a set number of hours of paid time off that workers are entitled to. It doesn't mean everybody gets it. It means the worker is entitled to it. So if they need it, the worker should 
if they're if they know about the law, they can ask their manager and they should be granted a set number of hours of paid time off. That's only in some states in the US. There is no blanket federal policy for this. What I see with time to vote is most companies land in the sweet spot of about four hours of paid time off on or before election day. And the pandemic has taught us that voting early is very, and voting by mail is incredibly easy and convenient. And that's why we have, over the last two years, we've expanded our focus to not just election day, but what we can do to help employees vote early or vote by mail if they can. And again, the rules vary by state. So what I found is that four hours of PTO is the sweet spot. And then uh, just say a little bit more about the kinds of educational resources you've seen companies produce. I know we're going to hear from Lee and Jessica in a moment, but are there some other examples that you point to about how a company can help educate its employees about the rules in their given state as far as voting is concerned? Yes, we... Time to Vote only focuses on the simple call to action of giving your employees time off to vote, but we roll out the menu of options for resources for educating your employees and for deeper engagement. And that's obviously where BFA is really helpful to us in curating the list of different NGOs that we can work with. You know, there's different websites out there, um, like some folks on this call and who have sponsored this call, like Motivote and so forth, who are great at providing the information to voters about when, where, and how to vote. And then if you want to do something beyond just voting, there's ways to sign up to be, obviously, be a poll worker. There's a big need for mm -hmm. that this year. Right. Or volunteer voter registration events. So if, if you join Time to Vote, you're making that public pledge. And then what you also get is a, our curated list of resources and different websites and nonprofits to work with if you want to go a step further. Okay. And again, there is no cost to become part of Time to Vote, correct? Exactly. Completely free. And then um, we, we can talk further later on about the ROI, but obviously there's employee satisfaction. And then sometimes there's, I mentioned the press stories that obviously carries a, a, a public um, approval benefit with it. Lee, let's turn to you and go from California to Florida. And um, Lee, you work in an entirely different industry in the hospitality sector and have facilities in a number of different states where the, I'm sure the rules vary from state to state. And you also have a bilingual population or workforce that requires you, I'm sure, to put your materials both in English and Spanish. So tell us a bit about how Legacy Vacation Resorts has been participating in Time to Vote. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Richard. Um, hi, everyone. So happy to be here on behalf of Legacy. Um, so Legacy, if you don't know, is a certified B Corp and a sustainable resort company. So we are on the smaller size with only about 250 employees, um, and we are in four different states. So Florida, Nevada, Colorado, and New Jersey. Um, so I came on to the Legacy team in late May of 2020 as the social purpose and sustainability manager. And now I'm um, on the team as the operations project manager. So joining the hospitality industry at the height of the pandemic was definitely quite a roller coaster. And on top of that, one of my first projects um, as part of our social purpose team was to get team members engaged and ready for the upcoming 2020 election season. So definitely quite the um, onboarding experience, but I think both myself and our internal team really learned a lot during those months um, and ran kind of a few good, almost mini experiments, if you wanna call them that, that helped us figure out kind of what worked well for our team members, what didn't work well, um, when it came to voter education and kind of civic, civic engagement, kind of right out of the gates, our chairman and other kind of key leadership team members were really pushing for our company to be more involved in civic engagement. Our top level leadership team thought it was definitely incredibly important and something that we need to improve on as a whole. And then kind of legacy's philosophy around it was that we as a company wanted to kind of 
aim to provide our employees with kind of all the facts and information in order for them to empower themselves to kind of make the best decisions for um, their communities, their families themselves. And I think kind of in the era of social media and then kind of like the 24 hour news cycle, um, misinformation can be everywhere. So we kind of wanted to provide unbiased, nonpartisan materials and resources to make it easier and less stressful for our employees um, to take part in this process. So joining Time to Vote really was an easy decision for us um, and proved out to be like a great partnership in the long run. So as we are in the hospitality industry, there are definitely a few unique circumstances uh, we needed to kind of maneuver around. One potential, potential pain point for us was, although we, were get, we are giving paid time off to go vote, unfortunately, we cannot have all of our employees at once kind of take off one day in November. We can't really shut down. Um, being that we own and operate resorts, we are a 24 hour 365 operation. And we need team members on site at all times to kind of take care of the guests and run the property. So in order to work around this, we made sure to give out the resources pretty much way ahead of time, like months ahead of time. So there was really no time crunch on election day or even election week. We wanted to provide this kind of voter education as well as like specific resources on the different types of voting, different ways you could, especially in 2020, there was a lot of confusion around that. And we have resorts in four different states. We wanted to provide specific details on different deadlines for registrations, different ways to vote, whether that's in-mail voting, early voting, in-person voting per each state. And that kind of took advantage of the different ways um, in hopes that this would allow team members to kind of plan out a few months in advance. Hey, I want to vote this year. Do I need to get registered? How can I get registered? And then really be able to kind of plan out if they need to take time off instead of maybe just taking the actual day that they can do it early. And that allowed us to be more proactive in scheduling time and spacing people out. And then the second item we needed to think through was providing all of our whether it was time to vote resources or internal resources that we created on our own in Spanish, as well as in English. About one third of our employees, um, their first language is Spanish. So this kind of provided us with a unique challenge when wanting to engage with our employees during the voting season, specifically those team members who maybe weren't on the corporate team, team members who myself and the social purpose department don't get to see every day, who maybe work at one of our resorts in a different state, and being able to provide them with resources in their uh, first language was really valuable and um, creating them easily digestible resources was super important to us. And then I guess kind of overall, um, I think it was really important for us to think through how we can make what we share with our employees most relatable to all levels within the company. So how can we make information on voting and civic engagement relatable to different skill sets, different positions, different roles, within legacy, asking questions kind of like, what does this mean to me? Why should I care about voting? And, or how will this affect me as a housekeeping attendant or a maintenance manager or even the VP of finance? So that was kind of like our overall thought process throughout getting ramped up for, I guess, the voting season. Lee, did, th thanks for that. Did you find that these efforts increase the number of people who participated and maybe led some people to vote for the first time? Yes, I think so. We actually um, created a kind of pre and post survey. We just created a very simple, um, I think it was like a Google form survey prior to the election asking people kind of um, if they were planning on voting, what kind of resources would they be interested in learning about? If they voted in the past, how did they vote? And then we kind of took those survey results and that kind of dictated how we were going to, you know, get this information to people. And then we did a survey at the end after, after the election and asked kind of, did you, did you vote? How did you vote? Whether it was in person, by mail, early voting, and then how can we make this process better in future years? What did we miss out on? Or maybe what did we talk too much about? Or how can we make this better for our employees? So Really, those two surveys um, were super helpful for us, just about our internal team, to learn about, okay, how many people voted this year. And they were all anonymous, and we didn't take anybody's names or anything, but we just kind of wanted to get numbers and then also get feedback. So in following years, we can kind of incorporate that. But overall, I mean, I think our employees really liked it, and they were engaged. We, we made some fun videos with our employees getting different people involved. Um, so it's not, they're not just seeing my face every single time or 
getting a thousand emails from me. Um, we tried to get uh, different levels of employees involved. You mentioned that there were a number of people involved in designing the program and senior management took an active role. So give us a better sense about how a, a team might come together in a company from different functional departments. And, you know, so somebody in HR, somebody in corporate communications, maybe someone in the finance office to come together to craft a plan that speaks to, you know, the entire company's, um, you know, the diversity of the, of the workforce in a company. Yeah, great question. So like I was mentioning, our, our chairman and owner, he, he really was the one that kind of uh, initiated like the spark, I guess, um, for our company. He had heard about Time to Vote and wanted us to get involved. So really came from top down. Um, and then myself and then our talent and purpose team, which is, is basically our HR team, um, we kind of came together thinking about ways of how um, our two departments could work together um, to get this information out. Really, it was our leadership team down to our social purpose team and our HR department. We were working together. And then um, to get kind of like more granular on the resort level and the employees who are working in different resorts around the country, um, we started thinking about ways of how we can get this information. Maybe they didn't have a, a work email, so they're not, they're not getting our company emails about voting and information like that. So we decided okay, let's, let's make these emails that they can print off and they're in Spanish and English and we can post them in our housekeeping departments or in our, ma or in our maintenance um, kind of break rooms and things like that. So really it was kind of like a team effort. Uh, we really had a lot of cross um, pollination across all departments in a company. I mean, we're only 250 employees, but there's a lot of moving parts. So we wanted to make sure that everyone was getting the information and, and it wasn't just kind of staying in the, the centralized corporate team. Okay, great, great. And JJ had mentioned or alluded to the benefits that a company might uh, accrue from offering this program uh, to its employees and workforce. So as you think about what you did in 20, and what you're about to do in 2022, what would you identify as a few benefits to legacy vacation resorts? Yeah, great question. I think the main benefit is just getting our employees more excited about it and engaged. As being in the social purpose department, we focus on kind of the environment, the community, and then the social impact of what we do. So I think that's our main benefit. We've really been trying to get our employees, just get them start thinking about this and asking questions. And hopefully they'll be making decisions when they go to the polls that kind of reflect legacies, values, and morals around these type of things. And I really just trying to get them the information so they can make the best decision moving forward. Lee, thank you. We'll, we'll come back to that. So Jessica, let me turn to you now. Um, totally different industry, um, telehealth, particularly working with a, you know, a very diverse and I guess somewhat young-ish population of customers, but not entirely. And I know that you think at, um, at HIMS and HERS a lot about civic engagement and about being part of the communities within which you operate. Okay. So to, to maybe pick up on Lee's thinking about the benefits that her company has derived from participating in Time to Vote, um, you know, first, why did you all adopt this program? And then how are you seeing the benefits to your you know, to the workforce develop from participating? Yeah, thank you for those questions. Um, thank you for inviting me to, to be here today and uh, Richard and, and Business for America and JJ, thanks for that great overview of Time to Vote. I think anyone listening that, uh, listening to, to JJ's comments can understand kind of the why um, uh, an organization or a business might get involved. And at Hims and Hers, we feel a sense of duty to empower our employee workforce. And for us, one facet of that is supporting their civic health. Um, and that includes their civic engagement and more largely having a role in, in supporting, promoting and protecting democracy. So that kind of answers the question of, of why. And I think that it seems like Patagonia uh, legacy, hims and hers, that there was sort of this, um, bold values and mission-driven 
mentality kind of inherent in our DNA. The reality is, is not every organization or business is going to have that. And sometimes you are going to have to develop arguments to get people on board and to create buy-in. And I, I feel very lucky that at Hims and Hers, there was such receptiveness to, to joining Time to Vote, to signing on publicly that we were going to give our employees um, a paid day off to vote and or either be a poll worker or volunteer and engage on election day in one way or another. And I think for us, as the groups alluded to, 2020 was such a mon monumental year. Um, we saw the confluence of worldwide and nationally really important and critical moments and movements. We saw a global pandemic obviously devastating the globe. As um, a telehealth company, we obviously felt like it was a responsibility to kind of respond to the uniqueness of those times. And we also saw a mass mobilization against police brutality um, and racism in the wake of the George Floyd murder. And to boot, we had um, a very large uh, presidential election. So I think those three things really crystallized for the leaders at Hims and Hers that it's important for us to demonstrate a commitment to our values, um, not just play lip service, but really illustrate that commitment. Um, and I think joining Time to Vote showing our employees that we care about their civic health and we we want them to be feel that we want them to be empowered to be engaged in society and be socially conscientious was really really important to us and i think we saw a lot of different benefits i think it was a morale booster i know for me personally um the public policy team at hims and hers did tend to lead these movements but I personally felt a great sense of community, especially being a fully remote workforce, um, seeing folks come together over Zoom at our all hands as we shared resources that were credible and nonpartisan and unbiased. And one of my favorite takeaways was actually that, you know, 2020 was a very important year, but the work shouldn't stop in 2020. It continued in 2021, it'll continue this year and so forth. And one thing that I've really loved is I think we were successful at empowering our employees because, you know, I'm in the San Francisco Slack channel at work and we just had recent local elections and folks took it upon themselves kind of from guidance internally to share resources and say, hey, don't forget to vote. And it was really cool to see that our employee base was now recognizing that the company cared and had a stake, felt empowered to share more as well. And speaking to Lee's earlier point, it was really important for us to work cross-functionally at Hims and Hers. Because we are a fully remote workforce, it can be very easy to see folks working in silos in their own virtual rooms and virtual Zooms. Once we started having more conversations internally, we realized that a lot of teams were thinking about these topics and about ways to support employee civic engagement. It wasn't just public policy, it was our legal team and our social and content team and human resources. And when we saw all of that excitement, I think it empowered us even more to want to share resources for our employees and also demonstrate a commitment to our customers. Because Richard, as you said, you know, we're a telehealth company. So digitally native demographics tend to be a large customer base. And those same demographics are the populations that expect uh, the businesses that they support to have kind of a social consciousness. And it was important for us both internally and externally to, to illustrate that commitment to our values. Mm -hmm. Great, great. And Jessica, what does it take sort of day to day to manage the program? And, and, and are you the manager and how much time does that take you? Yeah, yeah, it's a great question. I think um, from the sounds of it that all of us on the call, it's one facet of the work that we do. At Hims and Hers, the public policy team of which I'm a part of has traditionally carried the mantle on this. And I think it's because we're in a unique position where we're public ambassadors for the company when we're working in states um, to promote our, our policy objectives and goals. Uh, but we also do have a lot of kind of historic knowledge about political systems and about voting just because of the very nature of the work we do. So I think because of that, maybe some of the research and time that would historically have had to gone to finding those resources, we kind of have in our back pocket, which is really nice. But um, at, at Hims and Hers, you know, 
In terms of the time commitment, I think to the point that time to vote is non-prescriptive, I think it's also important to recognize every organization, every business is gonna be different. There's no one size fits all approach to engaging your employees and supporting their civic health. So for us, it's kind of choose your own adventure. And I think what we're really excited about in 2020 and leading up to the election is finding new ways that we can share resources. Um, 2020 was kind of our trial run. We did an all hands presentation. We gave folks time off to vote. Um, and now we kind of want to challenge ourselves to find even more ways to engage. So I really liked what Lee said about how they were engaging different parts of their workforce. Um, but I don't think the, the time commitment has been burdensome at all. And I think because at our company, there is that clear passion and desire that it's honestly some of the work I most enjoy and I find it extremely fun. But we, you know, it's important to recognize, especially for folks on the call, that receptiveness might not quite be fostered yet at your company. And you are gonna have to maybe argue and advocate a little bit more. And I'm sure we'll talk about that more during this call mm -hmm. because there are plenty of business arguments to be made for, for why companies and businesses should get engaged in promoting civic engagement. Right, right. And since you mentioned that, and you also mentioned the opportunity for companies like yours mm -hmm. to help protect democracy. What um, has been sort of the, the feedback you've received from employees about the connection between voting, a more stable political system, a healthy democracy, and maybe even voting as a way to reduce polarization? Is there some connection that you could draw for us? Yeah, I mean, I think that the way that we've also presented materials and education and this, this idea of time off to vote to our employees, because it's been grounded in nonpartisan, credible you know, information, we've been able to kind of offer ourselves up as a source of knowledge. Um, I think one thing that happens very commonly that can lead to polarization is there can be conflict when people assume people know information that they don't know. So one thing that I really liked that we did at Hims and Hers was that we said, hi, we're the public policy team, come to us with questions. And I think that that was a way for us to get around some of that polarization you can see when it's like, oh, you don't know when to vote or how to vote. And it was important for us to make sure there was kind of a, a safe space for people to ask those questions. Um, and I think even more so than kind of tying this thread between those topics, what was especially important for our employees and I believe our customers and stakeholders was really tying it to the mission of the company. Mm -hmm. So at Hims and Hers, our mission is to, to democratize access to healthcare. And we believe that telehealth is a huge value add when it comes to promoting health equity. So for us, there was a clear business argument to be made that when there is political instability or government instability, business operations can be threatened. And especially in the work that we do where we lean on and really need legislators and elected officials to be able to legislate and regulate on healthcare matters, it's super important to, for our systems and for democracy to be functioning as needed. And also for our employees and our customers to be empowered to vote for electeds and elected officials that you know, support their healthcare needs. So drawing that line and that connection, I think was also mm -hmm. really, really valuable and maybe even crystallized a little bit more for, for our employees than just drawing that, not, that line between polarization um, because it connected to what they spend their day doing and that was valuable. Great, great. Thank you, well, well said. Um, JJ, let me bring you back into the conversation here. You know, something that, we've spoken about a number of times is the importance that this is not seen as a partisan effort. You know, we're not trying to recruit uh, voters to support a particular candidate or party. And I know you've gone to great lengths to involve, as you said, Walmart or Dick Sporting Goods or, you know, companies that might be perceived as more conservative than Patagonia um, is. So, say a little bit about some of the feedback that you've received, um, maybe from skeptics who feel that really this is a, you know, just an opportunity to bolster turnout for the Democratic Party. Is there any merit to that contention? 
That's a great question. All you have to do is look at the 1,970 companies that are enrolled in Time to Vote. You can look at the whole list of the companies. They're all listed just with their name on the, um, the members page on maketimetovote.org. Mm -hmm. And if you look at that, you're going to see, yeah, Walmart, Bank of America. You'll see Patagonia, Ben and Jerry's. You know, you'll see every um, type of company in every state, every sector of the economy. And that represents more than 10 million workers in the U.S. We don't know that all those workers are registered voters, but we know that when we add up all of the numbers of employees at each of the companies that are in time to vote, we're, we're covering more than 10 million American workers. And that there's just no way that that is going to skew left or right. It's going to be all over the political spectrum. And I'll, I'll give you an anecdote. After the 2020 election, when there was a lot happening around Liz Cheney in, in Wyoming and Trump not accepting the results of the election, I read a story in Politico where a Politico journalist went to Wyoming and was interviewing voters in Wyoming and the reporter walked into a store. And the store is part of a national chain store that is a Time to Vote member. And the reporter quoted the store manager going on about how the election was rigged and how Trump really won it. Now, I, I work in Patagonia. I, I will plead guilty to being a liberal. And I'm reading the, the quotes from this person in Wyoming who works at a Time to Vote company. And I just laughed to myself and I said, well, glad we got him the day off to vote. <laughs> so, it, there's no way to say that this skews left or right. It's it's everything. Right, right. Good. Uh, Jessica or Lee, would you like to comment on that? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I think that, quite frankly, hims and hers probably wouldn't have, you know, had such a receptiveness to join if we had any qualms about that, because we have, um, since we are fully remote, we have folks across the country. We also have folks that might be U.S. citizens abroad or folks that aren't US citizens either in the US or abroad. So that was kind of a necessity for us to do this work was to make sure that we were signing on to pledges that were really aligned with this vision for nonpartisanship and that wouldn't alienate our employees. Cause especially as a remote work environment, the last thing we wanted to do was alienate. We wanted to see this opportunity as a way to bring folks to together to promote mm -hmm. civic engagement. Good. Um, so there's a question here for all of you to consider from Matthew LaFleur, which is asking essentially what companies can do to help those with disabilities um, participate in voting. And I'm thinking of a company, I believe, based in Ohio that we worked with in 2020 called Mobility Works. And they had made um, wheelchair accessible vans available to workplaces in a number of jurisdictions in the United States. This was their contribution to supporting the GOTV or get out the vote effort. So um, any experience with, with um, you know, supporting workers with disabilities to be able to participate from any of you? I would offer that giving folks paid time off is especially important for your disabled employees who might need a little more time to get out there. And then what you can do, whether you're in time to vote or not, is you can help your colleagues with information about voting early and voting by mail, if that applies in the state that they mm -hmm. live in. My, my brother's disabled, he lives in Massachusetts and he's able, he's his whole life since he's been 18, he's been voting with an absentee ballot. and. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's something I would yeah, highly recommend to anybody with, with physical disabilities. Great. Um, different question um, from Jessica Isaacs asking about voter registration. So, you know, that precedes, I think, as, as a number of you have suggested, actually voting. So you need to be registered, which requires, uh, you know, a, a person to either take the initiative to figure out how to do that, or maybe your companies can help provide that information as part of your commitment to time to vote. So um, 
Jessica, I see you nodding your hat, head or Lee. Yeah. But, um, maybe Lee, have you helped first time voters get registered? And, and what does that involve for the company? Yes, definitely. Um, in 2020, that's something that we focused on kind of prior to sending out um, a lot of information on kind of uh, how to vote, I guess, but trying to make sure our employees knew about registration deadlines. Um, since we're in four different states, we made sure that those were kind of, um, we were giving out those deadlines kind of way in advance so people had the time. And then we also, at some of our bigger resorts, we kind of um, let people know like, hey, stop by our HR department. Um, we can help you if you have any questions, like don't feel shy, don't feel scared about coming in. I mean, um, that could be scary for someone that's never voted or never registered. So um, I think just being open, I think Jessica said this kind of just having kind of an open door policy, um, like being willing to answer questions on, okay, how do I fill out this form? What do I need to have? Um, so that was something that we did um, in 2020 and just trying to get people um, that who haven't voted before registered and um, excited about it. You know, I'm, I'm thinking also of other companies I've spoken to about their commitments to time to vote. And as JJ noted in the beginning, um, there's really quite a range, right? So some companies are simply giving their employees some time off to vote. In some cases, it's paid. Some cases, it's just PTO. And um, that's the extent of it. Other examples here, as we've been hearing from our panelists reflect that there's their guidebooks, their how-to, their toolkits that are prepared. So it really runs the gamut of the, you know, of, of how each company chooses to educate uh, its employees. I, I'm also thinking of another example, Warby Parker, who I know invested a lot of resources in explaining how the ranked choice voting system in the New York City primary was going to work, which was fairly mystifying to a number of folks living in the city. And that was another element of their broader commitment to this, uh, to the time to vote movement. JJ, as we wrap up, I wanna turn back to you and ask about this culture piece that you've spoken about. And, you know, I, I think the broader objective as you've explained to me over the, over the years is to create, really create a, a habit of voting, create a muscle, of participating and then ultimately create a more civically minded um, focus on the part of the workforce and of companies to encourage people to participate in our, you know, our democracy. So um, give us a little a bit of your thinking on those topics, if you would. At Patagonia, because we've been doing this for so long, really, Prior to giving folks paid time off, we were still talking about voting and, and civic engagement. We've done research recently where it, the research shows us that our, the get out the vote message actually falls kind of flat at this point with our employees and our customers, meaning that they're already registered to vote. They're already voting. We, mm -hmm. we're, we're learning that they, they, they're already good voters. That doesn't mean we're gonna stop providing these resources and the information that's still important because now they, they're relying on us for that each election cycle to get that material. And we know that it's, it's worked because everyone is in the habit of being civically engaged. And that just, yeah, it's like a muscle memory. It just takes um, years to, to develop this. So what we're doing now this year is looking at how we keep it fresh and take it a step further for folks. And this year in particular, it's the volunteer piece that's gonna be mm -hmm. really important. Asking people to serve as poll workers if they can, which that's actually not a volunteer job. In most places you do get paid by your local government, by the county. So it's a good little side hustle for your folks if they can get some time off from work to go serve. Or if that's a little bit too much of a time commitment for people, there are opportunities to volunteer at voter registration drives and so forth. So we're, we're pushing that next level of engagement for our people, but it, it takes a while to bake that in to your company culture. Right, okay. Thank you, well, well good, good. Um, so I think we'll, we'll wrap up here, but just a, you know, a few thoughts. Um, you know, as JJ just said, 
serving as a poll worker is essential uh, and very helpful. You can also be a poll watcher um, to ensure that the integrity of the election process is being upheld um, you know, in your local jurisdiction. And the way to get involved in Time to Vote is to visit the website, maketimetovote.org. And you can, uh, there's a form there, as JJ noted, and you can complete that. Um, I want to thank our panelists very much today, uh, Lee, Jessica, and JJ. Thanks so much. It was really informative. I, I, I learned some new things about how the program works and how it's being operationalized in different companies. So thank you a, a great deal for your time. And folks, if you want to stay in touch with Business for America, you can subscribe to our uh, email newsletter at bfa.us slash subscribe or reach out on um, and contact us with any questions you have. We look forward to working with you all in the coming months to protect our democracy and ensure we have a safe, accessible, um, and secure election in 2022. So thanks everyone, have a great afternoon. Thank you. <laughs>